Today, I want to share with you a very quick tip that will help you phase align your subs and mains and be certain that you're applying the exact correct amount of delay. So this is a measurement I took recently. The blue trace is the top speakers and the green trace is the subwoofers. And right now, like this, I cannot read anything. So I'll turn on smoothing to six points per octave so it looks much smoother and I'll do the same thing for the phase graph. It's important that the magnitude and the phase are having the same smoothing ratio. So now the data is much easier to read and these traces are after the EQ is applied. This is very important because when you apply EQ on a signal, it shifts the phase by definition. This is what an EQ does. So if you do the phase alignment before EQing and then you EQ your speakers, you might be like half a millisecond out of phase depending on how harsh the EQ is and how much EQ you're doing. So it's important that for the alignment, you use the EQ cued traces, not the raw ones. So in this case, I was crossing over the subs and the tops at 90 hertz, although you see the traces crossing path at this frequency, 123 hertz, but the filter is actually at 90 hertz, so it's more like right here. So what I want to do is align these blue and green traces to be on top of each other at 90 hertz. Where's 90 hertz? I can't see it easily, so I'll scroll a little bit, and it's right here. So I want this portion of the trace to be aligned with the green one. In my case, the subs were in front of the main speakers, so I will delay the subs, but if the main speakers are in front of the subs, I'll delay the main speakers. So whatever is closer to the audience, I'll delay it so that the sound that is coming from the farther speaker has time to arrive together to the audience. So let's click on the sub trace and I'll start adding delay. And you can see the more delay I add, the more the phase goes down. And right about here, I think I have pretty good alignment. In this entire area, where is 90 hertz, here it is. So here I have alignment and a little bit below it and a little bit above it, the traces are overlapping. And here you might call it a day and take that amount of delay and just put it on your console, but you might be wrong. So this is how you can know exactly if this amount of delay is correct or not without squinting too much at the phase trace. You're going to create a math source with control M or command M, or you can go to file and add math source right here. And in here, you will keep the default. Don't change anything. We want a vector sum. So the type is summation and we'll keep it at vector. Why are we not choosing a power sum? Because a power summation doesn't care about the phase. And I'll show you in a minute. So right here, I'll choose my subs and tops. So this is the top speakers. This is the subs and I'll turn it on. And this shows me how these two speakers are combining together with this red trace. If I choose power sum and then I choose the delay of the subwoofer, nothing changes in the sum, it stays the same. However, if I choose vector sum, you see it changed. So the vector sum takes the phase into consideration. If I change the delay, you can see the summation is changing. So that's a really good thing. I'll reset the delay of the subs. And right here, you can see the red trace is dipping right here. So it's not summing, it's canceling. I'll remove the red trace from the phase graph just to make it simpler by clicking on the phase graph and clicking here and turning off vector sum. Okay, so we want this line and this line to be overlapping. So I'm going to go to the subs and start adding delay. And previously we did about 2.6 milliseconds. Visually, they are on top of each other and we can see it right here. However, let's check. If I do a little bit less, you can see it's dipping right here. If I do a little bit more, you can see how it's changing. If I keep going until like 10 milliseconds or 11, it goes back up again because it is in phase again. So this is a really cool way to know how much delay you need to add by just using the vector sum and looking how flat the summation gets. So it was about 2.6 milliseconds roughly. Here is the flattest, I guess, right there, 2.4. Okay, so at 2.4, I'm getting the most summation and the flattest summation. Not one frequency is combining a lot and another is dipping. And if I look at the phase graph, I can see that over that whole crossover region, the phases are perfectly overlapped because I know that I'm crossing over the subs at 90 hertz. So even though right here, it looks like they are crossing path at 120 hertz, 
the actual filter on the output is at 90 hertz. Okay, so again, very quickly, control M to add a math source, and then you go and make sure it's a vector sum, and you choose your top trace and your sub trace after the EQ. That's really important because EQing shifts the phase. And if your subs are in front of the mains, you start adding delay until this summation trace gets as flat as possible. If your mains are in front of the subs, you start adding delay to the main because you can't bring your subs earlier in time. I think that's a pretty neat trick if you're just starting out with measurement and tuning and you're not really confident with reading the phase graph and knowing what are your boundaries up until when do I want to overlap the traces. This is a good way to actually see the summation of the subs and tops together and how it's acting out in the real world. If you have no idea how to use open sound meter or take a measurement, click on the video on the screen right now and I'll see you there.